This is Twit. The FBI has admitted to, well, using the Tor system against itself to distribute malware. Now, this stems from the seizure of Freedom Hosting. If you haven't heard of Freedom Hosting, Freedom Hosting was one of these large data center, data service operations that basically said, you rent your server from us, and we don't ever look. We don't care what's on the server. All we know is that you've rented your space, you've rented your traffic. Interesting operation, but it, the reason why it was located outside of the United States is because that actually does run afoul of some U.S. laws. Now, the FBI secretly took control of Freedom Hosting in July 12th off of a child porn charge. They stated that the servers at uh, Freedom Hosting were being used to traffic child pornography. Now, that's actually very, very possible. In fact, we, we, don't, we know that's more than just possible. There was child pornography located on some of Freedom, service, uh, Freedom Hosting servers, and that's what the FBI moved on. But here's what they did. Rather than saying to the world that they had taken over Freedom Hosting, they stayed mum about it. They indicted the operator, who was Eric Marquez, currently in Dublin, trying to fight extradition back to the United States, and they used those servers to distribute malware onto computers that were connecting to freedom hosting of uh, uh, freedom hosting servers through tor that's the onion router network it's the network that tries to guarantee guarantee anonymity now we have to do a quick tutorial on tor for you to understand how this works it's not just regular encryption yes there's encryption but it's encryption in layers the way that tor works is you've got several thousand volunteer nodes or relays through which traffic can pass and it passes through multiple layers of these nodes bouncing back and forth back and forth each time it does that each time it goes from layer to layer it only knows the destination of the next relay that it needs to go to that means that it it, it pretty much guarantees anonymity it's difficult to track someone when you go through enough layers of the onion router what they did was they bypassed that Rather than trying to crack the encryption of the Tor system, they installed via a vulnerability in Firefox into the, the, the Tor bundle that some people were using a plugin that essentially reported the real IP address of the end user's computer. With that real IP address, the FBI could then look up individuals who were in the United States, show up with a warrant, and seize computers. Now, this from the uh, law enforcement perspective, is a pretty open and shut case. They took over a distributor of a, a known illegal product. They basically created a sting that allowed them to find the, uh, the actual identities of the, the people who were perpetrating the crime, and then they arrested them. But to people in enterprise circles, this is sending out a lot of ripples. Chibert, let's start with you. Why is this such an interesting story for those people who are worried about enterprise security? Well, because it involves malware, you know, it now on the FBI's defense, they were modifying a plugin that was doing in what in their mind is quasi illegal. It's the, the plugin that allows you to bounce around through all these different nodes. Uh, but it involves modifying a person's machine without their knowledge uh, and without an explicit warrant. So this starts getting into some really thin ice on whether or not that original warrant covered this much ground. Uh, definitely something we probably want to talk about on something like Twill. Right, right. Curtis, let me go over to you because this, this actually is a very important question. In this era where more and more crime that we're going after, the more serious crime, is it has some sort of electronic, some cyber component to it. The laws haven't caught up yet, uh, and the FBI has been lamenting this, the NSA has been lamenting this, that it's becoming more and more difficult for them to do their job because people can hide behind things like Tor, behind encryption. And so they would argue, look, this is, this is just uh, another tool in our toolbox. We didn't force them to go to these servers to, to download child pornography. It's just that when they did, their computers were infected. From the enterprise side, we count on things like encryption to keep us safe, especially in light of some recent government efforts to, to make sure that they could read everything. What would it do to the enterprise community if suddenly we started thinking, no encryption is safe, it doesn't matter where you store it, it everything can always be read? Well, let's remember that the heart of this particular exploit wasn't a break in the encryption. The heart of this was a social engineering hack. 
And that's what virtually every real security professional I know of fears the most. You know, the fact is that our encryption is pretty good if we indeed use the strong encryption that's available to us. Our firewalls are pretty good. Our security systems are pretty good. What is much less effective is the training that we're giving users and the the fear that we are giving users that what they do can have an impact on their livelihood and the existence of the entire organization. Uh, when you get right down to it, the human beings are the weakest link. And so to me, what this tells security professionals is that it's time to redouble the effort on training, on education, and on constant reinforcement of just what it means to be secure. You know, we, we laugh about all of the posters that went up back during World War I and World War II about the enemy that was lurking just around the corner. But I think it's probably time for something like that to be tried in today's enterprise. Let people know that every email they get could be something that will harm them and the organization and that they need to treat enclosures, attachments, anything that's not simple text in the message as a potential liability for the organization.